We want to go through the Weasler family of clutches. Uh, probably the most prominent clutch member in the family is a Torque Master clutch. And the reason I say that is it's on a lot of equipment that's already out there. Uh, the Weasler Torque Master clutch can use a different yoke, a metric yoke or a domestic yoke in it. And with a few clutch packs in different inch pound configurations and, and the metric and the domestic yokes, you can fit almost every clutch out there in every application with just a few sizes. Uh, for instance, what we do is on the Weasler clutch, uh, we've tried to control the heat and the way we did that, we control air. You can see the fins right along the top here. And I'm gonna take these off. What we have is uh, to those fins, we have point contact. Uh, on the clutch pack, we use a gray iron, just like an engine block. And so it, it's made to handle heat just like an engine in your car would. And then on the yokes, what we use is we use a ductile iron and the ductile is more flexible. So if you have some deflection, hit something or something, the ductile is made to handle that. What we're gonna do is take the clutch apart. We take the four bolts out, which point contact, which releases the yoke. So we only have contact from here in these four points. And what we do is we never build up heat into the U-joint. Most clutches build up heat here and the U-joints are welded onto them and it transfers the heat up and burns out the grease in the U-joint or the cross kit. So on the Weasler, you have a choice. You can use the domestic yoke, you can use the metric yoke, and then you have a choice of clutch packs in the clutch section. If you take this apart, what you're gonna find out inside is you're gonna find a, a cupped washer in there. The only thing that's needed to operate on this clutch is actually a half inch wrench. It has a holding place for the nuts on the top. And as I'm gonna take this apart, what you'll see is you'll see that the inside, we have two, two uh, uh, discs, friction discs, that actually rub and we control where the slip is. If we can control the slip, we can control the heat. So what we do is we put a neural centering plate in the middle and the plates only slip on the outside on the surface that's backed up by the air fins. So when, when you're using this clutch, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, the, as you slip it, the heat's actually gonna be dissipated by the fins. And I'm gonna show you how this actually works. I've got it apart. The back is just a plate, centering plate, a plate that holds it together. Then you have the cup washer that fits inside or the Belleville washer. And what this does, this actually gives you your inch pounds or your torque setting. Then next, you have a plate that goes down. Again, this is gray iron. And what it does, it has a surface that actually goes against the, the uh, friction disc. And the friction disc goes onto a centering plate here. And the center plate is actually knurled. And the knurling here lets it only slip on the bottom side of this. So the heat is dissipated by the fins. Have another friction plate here. Again, our friction plates uh, go on there. They're made of a little different material. Instead of being acid-based material, they're alkaline-based material. So what they don't do is they tend not to rust together. You see this clutch has been out in the weather and it has some rust, but it still works just exactly fine. Again, this side, it would slip on the inside of this clutch. The fins are here to take care of the heat. So what you have is a clutch that lasts about five to seven times longer than any other clutch on the market. And as I assemble it back together like this, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see, whoops, you're gonna see that you actually have tabs on the side. And when this is put together, you have a tab right here with some distance. As the clutch wears, this distance right here decreases. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna see that you're about out of a clutch. A normal spring clutch is gonna have a torque curve that kind of looks like this. And what happens at some point, you have to tighten it back up where this clutch, once you tighten it up, you can't over tighten it and it's gonna be the same until it just quits and then you replace the friction disc with no damage to the clutch. The next clutch I wanna to mention to you is, um, we, I'm uh, sorry, but on the Torque Master, we also have an overrunning clutch. If it has eight tabs in the center, it's actually an overrunning clutch. And what it would do is transmit power in one direction only. So when it's hooked up, it's only gonna transmit in one direction. And if you shut something off, then it gives it a rundown time so you don't take a clutch out on the inside of the tractor. Uh, next clutch we have is a shear bolt clutch. You find this on augers a lot. It actually has a bolt in here. If this bolt shears, what it does, it doesn't come apart. It just lets it turn. And then to replace the bolt, you come right back in here, put the bolt in here, the nut, tighten it back up, and you're gone again. 
shear bolt clutch. The next clutch that we have is a friction clutch. And what it is, this would be called a torque limiter. And when this, when this actually turns, the dogs actually go over these raised places, then it makes an audible noise. You'll see this on hay balers a lot where there's a lot of noise going on. You can still hear this when it slips over the noise of the, of the uh, hay baler.